This is the handheld electric bilge pump that I've just built. And I showed you um, in this piece of video how it was used. You can use it on your own boat. You can pass it to someone else. You can take it on a trip. Um, I'm going to show you how to do it. OK, I'm going to show you how to build uh, this handheld electric bilge pump. The core of it is one of these. I've just chosen uh, a little 12 volt pump. This is a C flow. So we need to provide 12 volts to this thing and a switch. And we need to do that in a housing that will be waterproof. Um, what I've chosen to use are basic plumbing parts. Um, so if you look at this thing, this is a plumbing pipe um, and it has this sort of, the key thing is this uh, top, right? These things are amazing. Um, so they, uh, they make a perfect seal. They, they're designed for um, sort of home uh, pressure um, water, right? So it's about eight bar um, and sits on the top and it has uh, some little O-rings inside it. The switch itself is also waterproof, so I've put some Gorilla Glue. I think I would probably use Silkaflex next to make this completely waterproof. There is a slight leak in this design, probably because it doesn't go in far enough, and I need to be a little careful about it. Uh, but if you push them in, then they are waterproof. Um, the pump has been placed in a wider piece of plastic, um, and on top of that plastic, I've glued one of these, drilled some holes in it, all right, and, and then filled it with epoxy resin. So I can then do this. And if you see that thing, that's where the USB charger goes and the wiring just goes down to the pump. So this one is, um, you know, you have to shove the wires in, push it nice and tight, and then it gives a nice waterproof seal. So inside here, I've got three of those batteries you get in vaping uh, e-cigarettes. They're 18560 um, spec lithium batteries. One, two, three. In order to charge it up, I need some circuitry to um, manage the battery. And for that, I'm using uh, these things. So let me show you this one. Every time you plug in a USB into something to charge it, you're going to have one of these circuits. It takes the, the USB input and it will do a couple of things for you. It will manage carefully the charging rate. Right? So it will look at the voltage on the battery and charge it at the right rate. It'll charge it fast and it'll slow it down. So that's the battery out um, tabs. And it will also, though I'm not using this, it will also manage the current. So um, you, if you hook it up to your battery, uh, it will ma uh, optimize the current so the current's not too high. I'm not going to do that, um, but um, this is to protect the battery from over discharging. I don't care about that very much. I'm going to use the bat use the the pump in an emergency. So if the batteries go flat, then so what. Uh, but mostly um, the batteries barely get discharged when you empty your boat. This thing is you need three of these. And that's because we have three uh, batteries in series, but we need to charge each battery separately using one of these. And I'm going to use one of these for each battery. And I put this whole arrangement on a, on a, like a little um, PCB. This PCB will fit inside the pipe. I have two of these. So what this thing does is isolate the three separate circuits to the battery so that when you plug your USB in, each battery is being charged independently and you'll get a different light on each one of these things. It's going to be orange when it's charging and blue when it's charged up. If you don't have these things, it will just short circuit, right? Because all the grounds are going to connect. I'll show you in the circuit diagram what you need to do. Having done that, um, the, you need a switch. I showed you earlier what the switch is like. I'll show you again. Um, so this just has a little push switch. It's waterproof. Inside the, the top cap, I put a little plug of plastic so that if I line it up the right way and push it in, it will activate the switch, right? So, and, it'll st and you want it to like stay pumping and you want to be able to lift it up and um, turn the switch off. So most of it then is um, just really shoving the electronics inside here and activating the switch. 
Um, that's pretty much it. I'll show you the circuit diagrams and maybe some links to a French chap who talks about these little circuits. But they're dead cheap. Everything about it is, re is relatively cheap, but it's really good. So these plumbing parts, you can get these in the UK from like home base, you get them online or get them from Juicens and places like that. Um, I've, and they're very strong as well. So you can't pull this off by accident. I've built um, like uh, towing poles for a pulk using stuff like this. And I broke down the pulk into two sections so I could then pack it up into a carry-on bag on an airplane. And you can pull like 100 kilos with just this. You need to hold it in exactly the right way to disconnect it. Anyway, if you are interested in building one, let me know if you have any improvements. Um, I would try and make it shorter, maybe a fatter pipe, but then I can't get these in a bigger size. I think this is okay to um, reach into another boat. But if you've got any ideas to improve upon it, we'd really, really love to hear your ideas about it. I would really like to be able to charge it by putting it inside um, like an inductance coil, right? And then I could have the thing completely sealed. That would be really nice. And I'd like it to have it shorter. Um, other than that, I'm really pleased with it. This, this is a close-up view of the uh, Seaflow pump. It's 12 volts. Um, it'll take about one and a half to two amps used for fish tanks and things. Uh, this is the 18560 battery. These come in two forms. There's a managed version, which has battery management in it. Don't get that one, get the unmanaged one, because that's what the other circuit will do. And this uh, is the end cap for the speed fit uh, fitting that goes on the pipe. This is the 28 millimeter one. You'll need to get the 28 millimeter a pipe to fit in it as well. Okay, so we're looking at the, um, the circuit diagram. And these are the uh, TP4056 chips. So I just put, uh, you're gonna have three of these, one there, one there, one here. Um, so these um, will get a feed from the uh, B0505S chip. That's the regulator thing I showed you a little while ago. You're going to have three of those too. So they're going in, uh, in a triple like this, this, and this. Um, you need a USB input. Uh, I've just used one of these again, so I have four that I'm using. So I have one that sits like this. And all I'm doing is just taking the uh, the input voltage and passing it to the isolator chip, which then passes it to the charger or the charging chip. And then these are the three 18560 batteries. Um, not shown as clearly as how it connects to the pump, but that's pretty obvious. There's, uh, it's going to be 12 volts, so in series, and it'll connect to the switch uh, that will then uh, activate the pump. Okay, when, you, when you've assembled all that on the board, it'll be on something like this. Get a, one of these little PCBs. Just make sure it can fit inside the, um, the pipe, right? I found that when I had, I needed two of these, so that, um, there are four of these things as I've shown you. Uh, when I've got all the wires in there and everything else, it's, it's tight enough that you have to give it a bit of a push, so it's quite firm. I didn't need any glue uh, to hold it in place. I had some glue to hold the switch at the end in place so it wouldn't turn. Um, but apart from that, I didn't really need anything inside once it was there. Um, 